Great. Welcome, everyone, to Resto's cooking class. We're really excited to have you guys all here. For those of you guys who um, have been with us before, Resto is, uh, and for those of you who haven't, Resto is a platform where we're supporting, um, you know, our favorite bars, restaurants, and cafes with, um, with, with funds during this time, which is really challenging. So we're hosting cooking classes, uh, drink making classes with some of the best people that we know from our favorite cafes and restaurants. And then all the proceeds from these events actually go to those bars and cafes. And um, this idea came out of um, just actually a, random, a casual run between my friend Shiva, who's on the line as well. Um, we were talking about how do we support some of our cafes, restaurants, and bars during this time. And we thought, why don't we just get them to showcase some of their favorite drinks and, and meals and, and invite our communities along to support those. And we're really excited that today we've got Mai Gan from Adventure Cafe, and she's going to be teaching us how to make the perfect coffee from home. Um, she's going to go through uh, three things. She's going to go through two types of coffee, and then she's going to go through a special uh, spiced latte, which is a turmeric latte, and she's going to guide us through how to make that as well. Um, just a little bit about today's session. So throughout the session, we're going to keep our microphones muted just so we can keep the focus on my. But if you've got a question, you can unmute yourself, ask the question, and then mute yourself again. Or if you don't want to talk and you want to just keep it a bit um, below the radar, you can also use the chat function to write in a question, and then I'll read the question out on your behalf. Um, also throughout the session, Mai's going to be running an amazing uh, trivia session. So she'll be pop populating little questions throughout the, the session, and you can use the chat function to respond to the particular trivia questions. And the winner of the trivia game will get a $5 discount off of Mai's coffee bean subscription that she started uh, during the coronavirus uh, situation. So. Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Mai, who's going to lead you through the session. Mai, let me just unmute you, and you're good to go. Hi, everybody. So good to see all your faces. Welcome to the virtual Adventure Cafe. I'm your barista and Adventure Cafe owner, Mai. I have an assistant today. Hello. This is Camille. She's going to be helping out. She's barista in training and assistant. So let's get started. I'm going to start out by taking your guys' orders. Um, let's see, who do we have here today? Um, let's start with Eyal. Welcome back. You were here yesterday. Are you going to have another shot of espresso or something new? I, I'm going to go for another espresso today. Okay, you got it. You're usual. You're regular now. I'm regular. <laughs> Amazing. Um, Mara, how are you? Welcome to Adventure Cafe. What would you like to have? I'm great. Uh, definitely an Americano, please. Americano. Excellent. We'll be making some of those today. Oh, bless. <laughs> we have Leanne back again. Would you like a bottomless oat latte? You're muted, but I'm assuming that's a yes. How did you know? Because you, that's what you got yesterday. There you go, so good I came back. Amazing, okay, great. And we have Laura from Puerto Rico. Woo! What would you like to drink today? I would love anything with some chocolate, okay. maybe. Yeah, she's got the sweet <laughs> tooth. You got it, a little mocha latte coming right up. And there's someone new I've never met before, Shmulik. Welcome to Adventure Cafe. How are you? What can I get for you? Hi. Um, I love an iced Americano. Iced Americano. Amazing. I'll be making one of those today with a little twist. Awesome. awesome. Taylor in California. How are you? What can I make for you? Hi, Mai. You look beautiful this morning. Thank you. So do you. Thank you. I would love a decaf latte. Decaf latte. Yes. She gets the decaf beans from us. You got it. And we have Allison Riazzi in Chicago, our yoga Hi. instructor extraordinaire. <laughs> this is my post yoga hair right now. Got all sweaty teaching. <laughs> uh, oh my God. No, I'm just going to go for the ride and <laughs> try to do what you're going to do. Cause Amazing. I'm not okay. I'm excited. <laughs> um, and then we have Erin and Maggie, also in Chicago. Hi. Hi. Hi, and my niece Bailey. <laughs> Hi. What can I make for you guys? 
Um, probably a pour over and uh, maybe a puppuccino for this one. Puppuccino coming up. <laughs> you got it. And Jenny Elman. Oh my goodness, another Chicago. I love you. Uh, Jenny's also a barista, so don't stump me with anything too difficult. What can I make for you? You're on mute. I just, hi, I'm so excited about this. Um, I just want to pour over hot coffee, please. You got it. Thank you. And we have Kat and Zelda. Ah! All the way from San Francisco, how are you? Good, good morning, everyone. Good morning. What can I make for you? Uh, just a cup of milk. No, <laughs> Um, macchiato? A macchiato, coming right up. I love it. So good to see you. And we have Rachel Zucker. How are you? Yes, hi, I'm from Israel. How are you? All the way in Israel. Shalom. Shalom. Malachimak, what can I make for you today? Everything is great for me. Oh, good. Okay, amazing. I'm going to give you everything. And Kate, thank you. How are you? How are you surviving in New York? What can I make for you? With me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> good. I'm surviving. Um, you, I saw something about like the some sparkling ice mocha thing. Okay, yeah, our uh, espresso tonic. I'm gonna yeah. make that. you got it. Go for it. And I see we have Anna joined us all the way from Spain. Hi! And you guys are all set up in Herman. Welcome to Adventure Cafe. What can I make for you to drink? What's your order? Ah. Spice latte. Spice latte. Okay, you got it. <laughs> I love it. And uh, I see Livia is on as well. I don't know. I can't see you, but if you can hear me. You can see Louie. Come oh, on. Louie. Louie. So cute. I thought he was. Yeah. Sure. I need coffee before you can see me. This is a dog-friendly cafe, so I'm glad that Louis is here. What can I make for you? <laughs> I want a latte, too. Okay, you got it. So good to see you. She's also in New York. Good to see you. Nikki Schnitzler. Oh, how are you? Hi. I'm here, so in Florida having uh, drinks on a balcony in Boca Raton, but here we are. Virtual coffee date. I know, I miss, I miss my travel buddy. What can I make for you? Well, so uh, tell me if this is outside of the realm today, but I always love Adventure Cafe's, all your like whimsical, colorful lattes. Do you have anything colorful? Yes, we're gonna make a colorful drink at the end and in the color yellow is the happy okay. So yeah, good order, I love it. Um, Shiba, welcome back. Shiba's my matcha drinker. W would you like another matcha today? I would, and with lavender this time. You got it. <laughs> um, we have Laura Becker and Jeremy. If you're on the line, it's all like, yay! Hi, guys. Hi, guys. What can I make for you? Um, I would, I mean, in life, I would love probably like an iced latte. Mm -hmm. Today, I'm looking for a pour over. Classic. You got it. I will also be doing an iced um, oat latte. Ooh. Also, this is virtual and made up, so you guys can literally order whatever you want. <laughs> the unicorn latte also coming. Good. Amazing. So happy to see you. And we have Rebecca. I can't see Hi, you. I'm here. No, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I wish I could see you, but what, what can I get for you? Um, you know what? Everything I was interested in has already been said and it sounds delicious. So I leave my guests up to you. Okay. Choose your own adventure, Adventure Cafe. I love it. Yes. Always with the hashtags. Amazing. Choose your own adventure. And last but not least, Liz. Welcome. Hey, Mai. How are you? Good. I can't get my camera to work. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm really glad you're on though. What can I make for you? Um, I usually get a cappuccino, but recently I've been into oat milk lattes. Amazing. Okay. So let's 
let's begin. I'm really excited you guys are all here. Um, a little bit about Adventure Cafe. Um, Adventure Cafe is actually turning five, May 15th. Um, and although the cafe is closed, we are offering our coffee um, delivery um, via subscription, or you can also just order it on our website. Um, so it changes every single month. And a nice part of the cafe and the reason why I love it is because it's a membership coffee shop. So I see the same people every day, sometimes two, three times a day. They pay for a monthly subscription and then they can come in as often as they want. So I think one of the things that we really miss in our normal day to day is going to our local coffee shop and having that routine and seeing our barista. And I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of that back today. So um, thanks for playing along. Um, one of my favorite quotes from Anthony Bourdain is that you learn a lot about someone when you share a meal together. And I think it's the same thing for coffee. Um, I love to sit down with people over coffee, learn about new cultures. And that's actually one of the reasons I started the cafe because I love adventure. I love to travel. And whenever I go to a place, I typically seek out like where the best coffee shop is. And I will like book my Airbnb based on that. If I'm going to South America or, you know, anywhere that has like a finca or a coffee farm, I'll try and go there and learn about the coffee. So a lot of what we'll be doing today is actually learning about coffee, um, how to taste coffee, how to pick the coffee when you go to the store. Um, what are you actually receiving when you get coffee, um, you know, shipped from Adventure Cafe and how to make delicious drinks using that coffee. Um, what you're going to need today, so to start off, we're going to start with a mocha. Um, if you don't have one of these, no worries. Uh, just listen along. We'll do a little trivia, but this is like my favorite thing to make drinks in in the morning. Um, it's super easy and it's kind of mimics, um, espresso. So we can make a lot of those drinks that you guys ordered, iced Americanos, iced lattes, um, using the mocha pot. Um, let's see. So what you're also going to need for the pour over, you're going to need this. You will need a filter. So I'm using the B60 filters. And these are specifically for this, um, this size of pour over, but it's also a filter that will help control the stream and the speed at which the coffee is being extracted. So it's important to have the right filter. Um, you're gonna need a scale and a timer for, for that. If you don't have everything, no worries. I'm just gonna give you the information um, and you can kind of eyeball along and I'll tell you like eyeball measurements as well. And the last thing we're gonna make is the turmeric latte, which you will need turmeric, um, ground cinnamon or cinnamon sticks, pepper, ginger candy, or ginger, powdered ginger, uh, fresh ginger, and coconut sugar or honey. So any kind of sweetener for that is gonna be great. So let's begin. Um, we're gonna start with our first trivia question. All right, you guys ready? Our first trivia question is, which country produces the most coffee? Is it A, Colombia, B, Ethiopia, or C, Brazil? And you can just put it in the chat so we have a little bit of accountability. Um, and I'm really interested to see if you guys get this right. In the meantime, I'm gonna clear my area here so that we can start. Awesome. So we're just collecting the results, put them into the chat function. And also just a reminder, if, um, if we're, as we're going through, Feel free to either put any questions in the chat, or if you want, you're also welcome to just unmute your microphone and ask it directly to Mai. She loves chatting to people, so feel free to unmute it and just ask her directly, or if you want, you can put it in the chat. But for now, put your responses to the questions in the chat function, and I see them all coming through right now. Sheba's gonna have a great time tallying all these out. So I can't see the chat function, but what did most people say? We're getting a lot of A's, a lot of Brazil's, oh, I'm sorry, a lot of A's and a lot of Colombia's and Brazil's coming through. Yeah, and when someone asked me this, I actually got it wrong. 
uh, the first time. But the answer is, are we ready? Wait, wait, wait. I think we're final, <laughs> final tiles, final votes coming in. Your last chance to put your vote in. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, I think we've got all the votes in. You're welcome to tell us now, Mike. Okay, the country that produces the most coffee is Brazil. <laughs> Samba. 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 Yeah, nice. Okay, guys, we're going to start making our mocha pot here. Um, what you're going to need is the mocha pot. Um, and we're going to start with putting some water in here. And you want to fill it up just below this knob right there. Okay? Um, so the, the mocha pot is really amazing uh, because it uses steam um, for the pressure to actually create the extraction in coffee, similar to an espresso machine. It's also an Italian made. Um, this thing is amazing and it's so smart. Um, but basically, the water is going to boil in here. We're going to put the coffee in here, which is a little basket, and it's really similar to a porta filter if you are a barista and you make coffee on the machine. And then there's another filter in here, and the steam is actually going to extract the coffee and it's going to come out on top. So it's a really amazing way to make coffee, and because the pressure is really um, strong from the steam, we're going to get a really nice dark coffee from that. So we're going to ground our coffee and you want to have enough to tamp the coffee into the basket. And I'll, I'll show you guys how to do that. In the meantime, for those of you who aren't grinding your coffee, we're going to move on to the second trivia question, which is which one of these beans has the most caffeine? Is it A, a light roast, B, a medium roast, or C, a dark roast? So which one has the most caffeine? How fine should we grind for the mocha pot? This is an excellent question, and thank you for asking it, because it's really important. You want to grind your beans on so if you think about, um, if you want to think about it this way, I was going to talk about it more for the pour over, but you want it to be fine because if you have it too coarse, the water is just going to go through it very quickly. You're going to end up with something kind of watery. So grind this as fine as you can. If you have coffee that we ground for you that's delivered, it'll be perfect. Um, otherwise, if you're using a hand grinder like I am, just keep on grinding it until it kind of gets stuck and doesn't grind anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and grind the beans. And we've had a few of the votes come in on the question. Anyone else putting their votes in before we get the answer? Final chance to submit. Which one of these beans has more caffeine? Light roast A, medium roast B, or dark roast C? We've had a lot of A's. A couple of lights. <laughs> I'll give you five seconds more to get your answers in. Five, four, three, two, one. And Ma, you're welcome to let us know. Is it light? Is it medium? Or is it dark, which has the most, most caffeine? So the light roasted bean has the most caffeine. Wow. Resounding winds around the clock. Did everyone get that? Yeah, I think everyone got that one right. Well done. How much more caffeine? You know, I don't know exactly how much more, um, but I do know that 
um, like the medium and darker roasts are actually going to have more flavor, which is why we want to go with medium dark roasts, um, especially if we're using an espresso. Um, it's going to, there's another question coming up to talk about this a little bit more, but when, um, if you taste the coffee and it's a light roast, it's going to taste a lot lighter. You're not going to get as much of the coffee flavors coming out, um, but you, you will get more caffeine out of it. Um, okay, so I have ground the coffee and I'm putting it into the mocha, into the basket. And Camille, can you do the camera thing? Sure. And now I'm just going to tamp it like I do in the cafe with my porta filter and my tamper. I like to tamp it down. Just like that. And now I'm gonna screw this part up on top here. This is just gonna sit on your stove top. I like to have it at like a medium to high um, flame. And that's it. Now we've started making our mocha. Um, and we'll keep checking back on that and I'll actually show you guys what's happening with the coffee. Um, but we're going to wait for that water to boil, creating the steam and creating the extraction so that we have a nice shot of espresso. And they sell these in different sizes. So some of you might have a really small one and only have one shot, two, three, four. I think Anna and Herman got like a massive one that has like six espresso shots in it. So that's awesome. Um, again, this isn't actually making us espresso. It's a, it's a happy medium between drip coffee and espresso. Um, so I'm going on to the next question, which is, is there a difference between espresso bean and regular drip coffee bean? It's yes or no. So A is yes, B is no. In the meantime, I'm just going to boil some water so that we can start the pour over. So those of you who are gonna do this with me, you can also use a French press and it'll be a very similar method. I know some of you don't have the pour over and you can use a French press for this part. So boil some water and we wanna use the water when it's right off of the boiling point. So right off the boil. So we've got the people are voting in, it's in the chat. Nicole said, I always thought there was, but I was told recently otherwise. So B, no, there is no difference. We're getting a lot of Bs and a, a single A. I won't tell you who got the A, I won't name and shame them. <laughs> well, that's, that's not the wrong answer yet. My, um, is there much of a difference between the paper filter and the metal filter? I always heard like the, the metal filter is better because it preserves the oils, whatever. Uh, you mean for the pour over, Livia? Yeah, 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 pour over. Yeah, you know, I've always only used the paper one. Um, I, I think, you know, there are different like schools of thought on this. Um, one thing that I like to do is, which is what I would like you all to do if you have a paper filter at home, is actually wet the filter before you start so that we can get that kind of filter taste out and it'll also warm our cup for us. Um, so that's kind of the nice thing about the metal one is, um, I think it's like probably a cleaner, more like authentic taste for the coffee because it's not having to go through the kind of paper filter. But I'd love to try the metal one. Are you using a metal one, Livia? Oh, I have a um, paper, but I was thinking about buying the metal because I heard somewhere that was better, the taste was better and more uh, planet friendly, whatever. It was greener for sure. Yeah, for sure. I think I'm gonna get one of those too. So to answer the question about, is there a difference between regular coffee bean and espresso bean? And the answer is no. The, the biggest difference is actually the way that the coffee is prepared. Um, so, um, it's actually going to bring me to the next question, and then I will answer um, a little bit more about this. So the trivia question number four is, what does espresso mean? 
Um, a, does it mean very fast? B, does it mean dark and strong? And C, to force out. So is it very fast, dark and strong, or to force out? What does espresso mean? In the meantime, I'm going to wet my filter here. No, it's not it. More? Yeah. I hear my mocha pot bubbling. I don't know if it's supposed to be ready yet. Is it bubbling? Yeah. Good. If you lift the top, is the coffee going to be there? Um, Shmuley. It's on top. Is the coffee coming out yet? Yeah. Okay. As soon as the coffee is done, keep an eye on it, turn the fire off. As soon as, as there's no more coffee coming out. If it's starting to bubble, you want it, you want to turn it off. Okay. Okay. So look look at your mocha pot and make sure that you don't keep it going because what's gonna happen is you're just gonna get water coming out of there and it's actually gonna burn your coffee. It's gonna ruin the flavor of it. So we, we wanna stop it at the perfect time. It's gonna be the same thing with the pour over. It's really important that we are controlling our environment. It's kind of nice, like at Adventure Cafe, I usually have the window open and like a bunch of people walking in. And coffee is super sensitive um, it, to climate, to like if there's more bodies in the room, the temperature will go up, the espresso will expand. I have to adjust my grind, adjust my tamp, adjust the timing. So it's kind of nice to do this at home. Um, the thing about the, the great thing about making a pour over is that you can actually see what's happening with the coffee like in the machine and understand a little bit about, um, you know, what the process of making coffee is in a controlled environment, because we're going to control the pour, we're going to make sure that everything is wet, we're going to control the temperature. Um, but it takes about five minutes to make. And this is like what I call my morning meditation. I love to do this in the morning. It's a really nice drink to make and you can also make them iced. But when you go to a coffee shop like do the barista a favor and do not order this when she's like in a rush because it is like so stressful um and it won't taste as good because this is a this is art and it's also in kind of like making it you know with love and preparing it with love and you can like taste the love in the cup so i'm going to answer you guys this question is there um what does espresso mean are we ready for, did everyone put their answers in for that? Final chance to put in your answer if you didn't. We've got a lot of, we've got a few A's, a few C's, and one or two B's. And so our A's being very fast, B being dark and strong. So a lot of very fast, a few um, to force out, and some dark and strong. Your final chance to put in your answers in five, four, three, two, one. All right, the answers are in. All right, as the answer to this is C, it's to force out. So if you think about an espresso machine, I mean, it's, it's like an engine. Um, these machines are super expensive and they use about 10 times the amount of pressure as a mocha pot and you're extracting and forcing out the coffee. It, it also is very fast. Um, and you can drink it really fast. So those of you who answered that um, weren't too far off, but espresso is to force out. Um, and so let's um, force some coffee out of these uh, beans right here, make our pour over. Um, to start the pour over, you want to start and everything, it will taste better if you have everything measured out. It is chemistry um, and kind of like baking, but not to the point where like it, it will be like undrinkable. So if you don't have the scale, I, it's not a problem. Um, but let's start with measuring out 27 grams of freshly roasted coffee. Coffee is good for about one to two weeks. I wouldn't go over two weeks. Um, it's really good to store it in a dark, dry place. Moisture will ruin your coffee. So if you have like a Tupperware to put it in um, and putting it in the you know, somewhere dark is really good. So I'm going to measure out 27 grams, not 26, not 28, 27. So make sure that you tear your scale. Uh, we have a question from Leanne. What's the difference between the coffee that you make in a mocha pot versus the coffee that you make in a French press? 
This is going to be more similar. The pour over will be more similar to um, the French press. It's almost going to be between a mocha and a French press because you are putting a little bit of pressure when you're when you're um, pushing it down. Um, but it's not the what's happening with this is the steam is actually what is forcing out the coffee. So it's not sitting there brewing together like it will be in the pour over. Okay, so I'm at 22, let me go to 27. And I'm gonna grind these nice and fine. Um, go a little bit lower. So Shmulik, same thing, you wanna grind this nice and fine. Think about sand, not pebbles. For you guys that are doing the pour over, uh, the French press, you're gonna go a little bit more coarse. You want, you don't want to go super, super fine with this. And my, is the taste the same between, like, are the tastes come out different if you're doing a French press versus a mocha pot? Yes, a mocha pot coffee will taste stronger. Okay. So I know we have some like wine drinkers on here. Who drinks wine? Yeah, that stuff's good. Um, so similar to wine, coffee is also really um, affected by the climate and the terroir and the roast. Um, and so it's kind of like when you go to the wine shop and you're like picking like, oh, my favorite wine is from Bordeaux or I like the New Zealand, uh, what do they make in New Zealand? Uh, Riesling or something. I, I'm sorry if that's wrong. I'm a coffee person. But I do the same thing when I go to a cafe or when I'm getting the coffee. I'm going to look at where it's a coffee from. Um, ours for this month was a blend of Colombia and Ethiopia. I like a medium to dark roast. I, if, if they'll let me and, and I'm at the shop, I'm taking it out. I'm looking at the beans. I'm smelling the beans. And I want to smell what it says it should smell like um, on the description. So sometimes you have the, cho the chocolatey mocha notes, cherry notes. Um, ours is a floral kind of zesty orange notes. Um, so you can't always expect the same taste when you go to a coffee shop. Um, you know, if I'm going to Starbucks, I'm going to know it's going to taste like burnt poop because they over roast their coffee. Sorry, the Starbucks folks. Um, but the reason that they do that, when you over roast and you get a very dark bean, that's because you're dealing with a bean that's inferior and not as good. So they're not really looking for the flavor profile. So if you can go to a specialty um, coffee shop, it's nice to make sure you're smelling what's in the bag. So this smells amazing. And I'm going to put this in here. This is already nice and wet. All right, get all the coffee out. It should be about, about halfway full. And my, we've got a question. What's the difference between by, it's a, sorry, a question from Patrick Dominguez. What's the difference between buying ground coffee and pre-ground coffee at a supermarket or cafe, like coffee beans? Do you mean like, is it better to buy it whole or buy it pre-ground? Patrick, do you want to, you can unmute and ask. Sorry, Pat. Yeah. Um, yeah, what's the difference between like getting a bag of pre-ground versus a bag of beans? I mean, it's always going to taste better when the beans are freshly ground. Um, they can, once you're grinding it, you're already releasing some of the flavor and um, the carbon dioxide. So you want to keep it in, in its form, in its shell. Um, for as long as you can. So it's, it's going to taste better if you can, if you have a grinder at home and you grind it fresh. But again, like if you're ordering, like the, the downside of it is this is not the most amazing grinder. And I can see in here that my, my grinds aren't all the same size. And that's also going to affect the flavor. Um, Cause I want it to be uniform. So that all of it can um, brew the same way. So I think if, you, if you're getting um, ground coffee, just make sure you're looking at the date of when it was roasted, when it was ground. 
um, and then smell it and you know, it'll, it'll be fine for one to two weeks. Cool. I'm going to check on this mocha pot. The, the coffee's coming out. Camille, you want to show them over here? You guys see that? The coffee's slowly coming out, nice and easy. And I'm, I'm not going to give away what I'm about to ask you guys um, as one of the questions, but there should be a nice frothy layer that's a little bit lighter on the top. And then you're going to see it kind of start to speed up. And the color will change now. You can see the color is changing, it's foaming up, and water is coming out. So I'm going to turn it off. There you go. So that's ready for some of the drinks that you guys ordered. So there's a question do the beads last longer? Um, if you don't grind them. Do the beans last longer whole if you don't grind them? That's from Leanne. Yes. Yes. If you don't grind them if you want them to last longer. Yeah. Keep them whole and grind them per cup. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So what I want to avoid right now is I don't want to over extract or under extract the coffee as I'm brewing it um, in the pour over. And that was the same thing I was trying to avoid in the mocha pot. I want to turn it off. We want to control this right now and make sure that as we're making the coffee, um, we're watching it very closely. What does, this is trivia question number five, what does an over-extracted coffee taste like? So does it taste A, sweet and floral? Does it taste B, burnt and salty? or C, sour. This is if it's over extracted. So what, what is that going to taste like if we over extract our coffee? Over and while we're doing that and answering that, I'm going to grab some stuff for the mocha drinks that I'm going to finish up for you guys right now. your votes into the chat if you haven't done so yet. The question is, what does an over-extracted coffee taste like? A, sweet and floral, B, burnt and salty, or C, sour? Okay, so who ordered an iced oat latte? I think we had a few of those. Yes? Gonna, guys, I found Oatly. Like, how exciting is this during a quarantine? It's the best. Um, so we're going to put some oat milk in here. The way I like it in the cafe is I, I like it to look layered. Um, last night I actually made a lavender simple syrup. It's really easy to do. You just need some lavender buds like these. Usually you can find them like in a store where they're already off of the flower and they're just like in a box. So I took sugar, I put a bunch of lavender flowers in, about a tablespoon, and then I just add hot water and I continue to stir it until all the sugar dissolves. I leave it out overnight until it gets to about room temperature, and then I put it in the fridge. And this is everyone's like favorite drink in the cafe is our iced honey lavender latte. The secret is there's no honey in it. The honey, I, I made it into a simple syrup. This is a sake bottle, it's all I had at home. Um, so I'm gonna put some lavender in here. So I believe somebody ordered a lavender one. Yeah, it smells so amazing. And I know Shiba, you wanted it in your um, matcha, which we're not making today, but we will another day. I'm gonna put my lavender in and then, You guys can see what the mocha 
looks like nice and dark. Yes, this is a shot glass. I'm at my brother's house. He's 23. <laughs> and he has, <laughs> this is, I'm just using the, the tools I have, but I'm going to pour this over. And we have a delicious iced lavender oat latte. It's so good. And be, because I am my, I'm going to decorate it. So you guys can see. Very Instagram worthy latte right there. Who wants to sit? Yeah, Riazi. Um, and then the other drink, which I think, Aaron, you, you wanted to try this. It's a cafe tonic. Um, this is very popular in the summertime when it gets really hot and humid. It is, you can use tonic water or seltzer. I use San Pellegrino. Um, putting a little bit of uh, simple syrup is really nice with this as well. But just gonna sparkle some water over ice. And then I'm gonna add a shot of my mocha espresso with my shot glass. Okay. So it's kind of like a very bubbly, um, sparkly coffee kind of like a sparkling iced coffee. It's really good. And another thing that's really good with this is just adding a little touch of lemon, a little lemon zest. And then we have our cafe tonic over here as well, which is a really cool drink. And these are kind of creative things that not a lot of places um, serve and have, but it's so easy to make at home and it's really refreshing and delicious. So I recommend trying those. Um, Schmulik for Americano, you just want to um, boil some hot water and add your mocha in there is a shot of espressos and you can just make it as strong or as light as you want depending on how much espresso you put in it. So cheers guys and we're going to continue on. I'm going to answer your question. What um, what does an over extracted coffee taste like? Yeah, we've got all our votes in it. Great. So over extracted coffee it's going to taste. The options are sweet and floral, burnt and salty, or sour. What is it, Mai? It's going to taste burnt and salty. Burnt and salty. Yeah, and the reason for that is because you either ground your coffee too coarse or too fine, which means the water was flowing through the water uh, through the coffee either too fast or too slow, or maybe you just didn't watch the timer or the weight and you continued to pour too much water. And it's the same thing on an espresso machine. Um, it's, the espresso is very delicate and sensitive, so you really have to pay attention when you're making espresso. Um, and in coffee terms, we call it dialing in and making sure that the coffee is tasting just right. So over extracted coffee means not enough water is going in. Um, you ground it too fine and you need to make the coffee a little bit coarser. So if you're, if you're tasting coffee that's really salty, um, you, you want to just make sure you're making that coffee a little coarser, adding more water. Or if it's really sour, that means it's under extracted and you need to add more water to the coffee. Uh, sorry, you added too much water to the coffee, so you need to make the grinds finer. I'm getting confused. All right, guys, so let's begin. Who knows what makes NYC bagels the best bagels in the world? Trivia question number six. Why are New York City bagels the best bagels in the world? Is it because the climate in New York, 
that A, climate in New York, B, the New York City tap water, or C, because bagels were invented in NYC? So which, which was the answer to that? Let me know when, uh, we, when we have some of those answers. The answers are rolling in now. We also had a question about your last um, point about the, the sour, like when does the coffee taste like that? Is it, is it before, during, like when do you actually get that taste happening? So when, once we're done with this, or if you made your mocha and you made your Americano and you're like, oh my God, this tastes so gross and burnt. I mean, how many times have you gone to a cafe and been like, this is super sour, this tastes really burnt right now. Um, that's, that's when you taste it, when you're, when you're drinking the, the final, you know, result, if it's tasting too burnt or too salty, is because it's either over or under extracted. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, why is New York City bagels the best bagels in the world? Which they really are, and I miss New York, and I miss my friends there. Um, votes coming in. Put in your final votes. Put in your final votes. We have Taylor leading with five correct answers and a few others trailing behind. <laughs> well done, Taylor. Keep it coming. Come on, others. We can beat her. All right. Last five, four, three two, one, to get your answers in for what makes New York City bagels the best bagels in the world, A, the climate in New York, B, the New York City tap water, or C, because bagels were invented in New York City. My, what is it? The answer is the New York City tap water. Yes, the New York City tap water is what makes the bagels so amazing. And it's also what makes 90% of coffee is water. So it's gonna be very important when you guys are making your pour over, your French press, that when that water that you're boiling should be filtered water. It's going to also impact um, the flavor of your drink. So if you are, if you guys are ready, we're gonna start making the pour over. We have uh, wet our filter, we ground our coffee to 27 grams, we put the coffee in the filter. The cup is nice and warm, and we have everything on the scale. And I'm going to tear the scale to zero grams. And I'm going to start out by the first pour, which I'm going to wet all of the grounds of coffee. So Camille, if you wouldn't mind um, bringing the camera over here. You guys are going to do the same thing in your French press, OK? So with control, you're going to wet the grounds in a circular motion to just make sure that all of them are getting the same amount of love and attention. And it's about 40 grams for me. It could be 50 grams for you. Um, which brings me to my next trivia question. What do you call the first pour? What I just did right now, there's a, a name, there's a technical coffee name to this process. Um, and we're going to wait 30 seconds on the timer for this process to finish. So I'm going to set a timer for 30 seconds. What is the name of the first pour in a pour over? A, the first pour, B, the first pour, or C, water. Right. So A, the first pour, B, the bloom, or C, watering. So what is, what is this called? And I'm going to just add some more because I don't want this to get messed up. So 30 seconds are up. And while that was happening, what you should be seeing is your coffee is starting to expand. And almost like in science class, when you are making a volcano, don't let it go completely dry. You're going to keep on watering your coffee in a circular motion. 
and have control over it so that every single ground and every side is getting the exact same amount of attention, same amount of water. And you should even be seeing it bubbling up. You should be seeing the colors change. So it's a, as you're brewing the coffee, it's actually getting lighter. You guys see that nice layer on top, some bubbles forming there. So we've got some carbon dioxide being released. This is what is creating the flavor in the coffee. And we wanna make sure that we're not stepping away from this at any time because if it completely, if the um, coffee grounds dry up, you're not gonna have a very good flavor. So Camille, will you click on Shmunik? I wanna see his pour. Maybe I can give him some pointers. Let me do, do like a gallery grid. There. Here. Nice, Shmulik, show us what you got. I'm gonna pin him for a sec. So you're using the metal one and... Well, it's a paper filter, it's just a metal um, cone. Cool. And how much coffee do you have in there? Is it about half full? Um, what, I, what do you mean? I put 27 grams in. Um, Great. Do you have a scale? Are you weighing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm weighing it. What? How much? Uh, how many grams are you at? Oh, right now the water. I'm up to two forty six. Two forty six. Okay. You guys want to make sure we're gonna stop it at three hundred grams. So keep on going. And I would. I am right now just by comparison. I'm at one hundred and seventy grams. Um, so I would say you're maybe going a little fast, um, and you have a really big pitcher with a really big spout, so you have a lot of coffee coming out all at once. So a little bit more control, um, and like this isn't what I use in the cafe either, it's literally a coffee pot. Um, so maybe for you, try to go a little bit higher, but you're doing it right. Um, you just want to maintain the same temperature. So if you're adding a lot of coffee all at once, it might be messing with the temperature a little bit. Um, cool, anybody else making theirs right now that we can see? Maybe in a French press, give you some pointers. Hey Ma, it's Sivan. Just wanted to say hey. Hi Sivan, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Good on you. Good, I miss making you your morning cappuccino. <laughs> yeah, I miss you guys, so. Oh, I'm so glad you joined. How's New York? Yeah. I'm actually in, I'm still in Houston. I get back there soon. Yeah. But yeah, I was just telling everyone that hopefully you guys will reopen because you were like the best coffee shop. And it's, yeah, so just supporting you always, you know. Thank you. That is so nice to hear. Definitely, uh, I miss you guys a lot. So hopefully I'll awesome. see you. Thank you for coming and saying Pleasure. That. That's awesome. Definitely. All right, guys, I'm at 200 grams, and I wanted um, to see where we're at with the trivia. So, um, hold on, go a little slower. You've got all of most of our answers in. So, what is the name of the first pour in a pour over? A, the first pour, B, the bloom, or C, the watering? Everyone's got their answers in. You've got Three seconds to get your final answer in. Three, two, one. That's it. I think we've got them all, Mai, if you want to share with us. Okay, so the, the first pour in a pour over is called the bloom. And it's kind of a very fitting name because it kind of looks like a flower blooming. Did you guys see your coffee expanding, changing, lightening? So what we're doing is we're releasing carbon dioxide and actually um, you're going to be able to taste all, we, what we want is for it to dissolve it all and have all the good flavors in the coffee, but we're going to maintain kind of the bad flavors in the filter. So that's kind of, we're trying to find that balance right now between keeping all the good stuff in here and the bad stuff up top. So that's why we're, we're weighing, we're timing everything. This whole process should take about three to four minutes um, if you're doing it at home. Amazing. How are you guys doing? Taylor, how's your pour over coming along? You doing a French press? 
She's like, I'm drinking it. She's trying to pour over. Oh, nice. That's a beautiful handmade one. So nice. So California. Anybody else making something that we can see? All right. So once we've got to the 300 grams, we're going to let the coffee um, drip for about another 30 seconds or so. Um, to be totally honest, my grounds are like way too coarse. And I should have ground them um, finer from what I can see. And it's funny, the more you do this and the more you taste coffee, um, I, I can tell like in my cafe when my baristas are making a drink and I'm on the register, I can tell from the smell if they have made their espresso right. I can hear if they're steaming the milk too much, too strong, too long. Um, and then you can literally hear the scream of the milk because uh, it's not getting enough air. And it's the same thing with coffee. You guys are gonna learn to understand and have a relationship with it where you're understanding what is happening and what it needs. Does it need more water? Does it need um, to be a little bit finer? Um, and you'll also learn the different aromas from different um, places that you buy your coffee from. Camille and I bought one from Ethiopia at a cute little cafe down the street. They're just selling coffee out the window. And as soon as I opened it, it was like a bouquet of flowers and it smells really good. And I'm excited to, to try that. Um, all right, so I'm gonna show you guys my coffee bed and I'd like to see yours too. So don't throw away what you have left in your filter and your grounds yet. But what you want is a perfectly even bed. Can you guys see that? Oh, can you hold that right there? If you think of it as like a, another planet, it should be completely flat. It shouldn't have any like mountains or valleys. And as you can see, I, I poured it very evenly and I gave every piece of coffee the same attention um, so it's nice and flat and this is what it should look like you guys have any that you can show me any grounds left if you oh here we go let me see taylor's um yeah taylor not bad as you can see you completely favored the left side and you're your grounds could definitely be finer. Um, so grind your coffee even more. How about anybody in a French press? And you guys in the French press, and I'm sorry if I've ignored you, but, oh, yeah, Jenny, making that French press. Amazing, yeah, that looks really good. Did you add more water after the blooming and then push it down? Um, well, I drank most of it already, but um, yeah, I did. I did the evenly, whatever, the even distribution of the water, like you said. So thank you. It looks good. And uh, Anna, how about you guys? Did you do the mocha pot? Yeah. We are waiting for the spice. Um, latte. You're going to make it dirty, which is one of the next questions. Um, do you have your old mocha pot still? Yeah. Yeah, can you show it to us? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so these things like last forever. Like this is why I love the mocha pot. Please, her, I need Herman help because I'm very short. Um, Herman. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So, Where is it? Ah, put it away. Look at that thing. Look how much love that that guy got. I mean, you must have had that for a long time. It's even missing a handle. So yeah, but then the handle broke. And then it's impossible to hold. Yeah. Uh huh. Nice. So yeah, I mean, you guys, the mocha is really great because it lasts forever, um, and you get really good quality. Same with the pour over. So my coffee is nice and dark. I can't wait to drink it because I haven't had any coffee yet today. And as you can see, it takes a lot of patience and um, 
love to make one of these. So uh, don't add milk to it because you're just going to ruin the flavor and you won't be able to actually taste all the notes um, and the hard work that you, you know, even the farmer that's making the, the beans and growing the beans um, wants you to taste as they're roasting it. So respect the coffee. Um, but I won't judge you if you want to add some milk to it. And a nice little thing to do with these two is you can add a little lavender oil. And this is really great as like a facial. Um, you can uh, use it as an exfoliator and it's really nice. Okay, so we are gonna move on to our, um, I have one more question that I forgot to ask. It is, what is the foamy part of the espresso called? And in the meantime, I'm gonna get all of the um, things that we need to make the turmeric latte. What are your options? So what's the foamy part of the espresso called? Is it the crema, the foam, or the heart? Just a quick update. We have a tie between Schmolik and Taylor. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm very competitive, so I'm so glad that we made this uh, a competition. Okay, what is the foamy part of the espresso called? And let me know if you guys are um, ready for that. Got the votes rolling in. Um, Taylor and Shmulek in first place. Got a couple in second place. Taylor and Shmulek have provided the exact same response to this question. The time may continue. <laughs> <laughs> Look at she's so competitive. I know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Seeing all of you. Get your answer uh -huh. in. Everybody got their vote in? Five seconds to go. We'll give you five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. What is the foamy part of espresso called? A, the crema, B, the foam, or C, the heart? And My the answer to that is A, the crema. The crema. A, the crema. A lot of people got this one correct. A lot of A's, a B, and a couple of B's, mostly A's. Well done. Nice. Okay, so let's move on to the turmeric latte. This is what we're here for. Uh, Nikki, this is a colorful drink for you to make. Um, you don't have to make this into a latte. I mean, technically, a latte is milk. So um, uh, sometimes... Um, People think it has espresso in it. Uh, it does not, but we could add espresso. Um, so you can just make this and then just add more hot water to make this a really nice tea or add milk to make it a latte. So to start out, let's start by um, heating up our milk. So we're gonna, we're gonna use our stove top here. Gonna have the milk nice and low. Wash the milk and put your hand up next to it if it was too hot. Let go. So the way that um, I I steam the milk in the cafe is I always have one hand on the handle and one hand on the pitcher so that I can feel the temperature. So when the milk starts to feel too hot, like you you can't really touch it anymore, that's when you want to to shut it off. Um, this is really great with non dairy milk because it won't actually ruin the flavor. And um, I really prefer it with almond milk. I'm using oat milk because it's all I could find. Um, but oat milk is really overpowering. So I think um, if you have almond milk, it tastes really good with that. Otherwise, I'm using oat. Regular milk is good too. Just make sure you're watching the milk. Um, you don't want to burn your whole milk or like your, your cow milk. That will not taste good. The oat milk and the almond milk, soy milk, um, if you, if you like over steam those, there, it's not going to really ruin the flavor. Okay, so let's start. Um, uh, we're going to start with putting turmeric in. My little secret, and don't share this with the world because I feel like nobody knows about this, but I use this Trader Joe's turmeric dietary supplement. Um, it's really easy and it comes in like a, this kind of, pill form that you can open up 
and it's exactly a teaspoon. Otherwise, you can use a teaspoon of turmeric. So I'm going to open this and put it in the cup. And you can see that it is like a gorgeous orange. So you want your turmeric to be a nice orange color. Nice and healthy. The next thing you're going to add is your ground cinnamon or a cinnamon stick. You're going to want a teaspoon of that as well. The, the ingredients to this should be in the chat. I'm gonna add the cinnamon. Next, I'm gonna add just like a tiny splash of ground pepper. Because apparently ground pepper like activates the turmeric. You can't really taste it, um, but I believe it, so like why not? Just a little splash of that. And for sweetener, um, honestly, coconut sugar tastes the best in the turmeric latte because it gives it a really nice warm um, flavor. But honey works really well too. Agave, any kind of sweetener that you want, you can use dates. Um, so yeah, nice, Riazi. What are you using? I can't see. Let me see. Yeah, coconut sugar. Yeah, isn't it amazing? So good. Okay, so I use a tablespoon of coconut sugar. And the coconut sugar will also kind of affect the color that you get in the end. So don't be too upset if it's not like super um, yellow or super bright orange. What I do in the cafe is I create what I call the spice of life. And I actually take a jar and I put um, ginger, and ginger powder, uh, coconut sugar, and cinnamon all together and shake it up so that it's one kind of spice. And, but I'm going to kind of break it up into these different components for you guys today so you can see exactly what we're putting in it. And the last ingredient is ginger. Fresh ginger is really good. Um, Powdered ginger is awesome. If your Trader Joe's was out, ginger candy. That's what I'm gonna use and it's really good. It also sweetens it and it adds a really nice spice. Um, it's like a little treat after you um, finish your drink when you get to the bottom. I see uh, Leanne is grinding her ginger here. Very nice. Amazing. Erin's like enjoying her drink. Love it. Everyone's working hard. I'm going to wait for you guys to add this ingredient before I continue and give you a minute. In the meantime, for those of us watching, make sure you're watching your milk as well. Our milk's ready. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to ask a Another uh, trivia question, which is trivia question number nine. What makes a drink dirty? What makes a drink dirty? Is it A, adding alcohol, B, adding a shot of espresso, or C, using unfiltered water? So which one of these things is gonna make a drink dirty? You guys can answer those in the meantime. For those of you who aren't um, making the drink along with us. For those of you who are making the drink, now's the time where we're gonna add some hot water. So you should have some hot water ready to go from the other drinks that we made. You're gonna add a, a shot of hot water to this. So you're just gonna kind of wet all of the spices in the bottom. And if you have a whisk, like the kind that you use to whisk eggs, if you have a, a matcha whisk, like the bamboo kind that you use um, to whisk matcha, I recommend using that. Otherwise, just aggressively use a spoon. Um, if it's not mixing very well, that's okay too. I'm gonna add a touch of honey to mine, see if that, if that'll help it kind of 
makes it a little bit better. But just continue whisking it until you kind of have this, like a shot of turmeric. And everything should dissolve into the water. Got a question, how much water from Allison and Riazi? Um, maybe a couple ounces, not a lot. Just like a shot. I have, just make sure that you wet everything. I'm gonna show you my, my cup. It's like that much. So if this is like three ounces here, I, I would go to two ounces. Riazi, how's yours looking? Let me see. Yeah, perfect with the whisk. Yeah, keep on whisking that so you don't have any clumps. And when, when we're adding the, um, the milk to it, we'll continue to whisk it and stir it. Just whisk away, whisk, whisk, whisk. Yesterday, I about the pepper. Yeah, did somebody have a question? It's kind of brown. Should I add more turmeric? No, you're good. Okay. <laughs> I know, it's, it's because of the coconut sugar. Um, but hopefully when you add the milk, you'll see that the color is going to lighten. All right, guys, what makes a drink dirty? Let's see. I forgot what the options were. The options are adding, adding, a, adding a shot of espresso or C, using unfiltered water. A, adding alcohol. B, adding a shot of espresso or C, using unfiltered water. What makes a drink dirty? And I think we've got all the answers in. Go ahead, Mai. All right, so the answer to what makes a drink dirty is B, adding a shot of espresso. So you guys might hear somebody say, I want a dirty chai, I want a dirty uh, turmeric latte. A red eye is um, adding two shots. No, sorry. A red eye is coffee with a shot of espresso and a black eye is when you add two shots of espresso. Some people are really intense. I make dirty matchas. Um, so the turmeric latte is also really good with a shot of espresso. You're not gonna really get that beautiful golden color. So you're gonna wanna actually make the latte first and add the shot at the end. Okay guys, we have whisked away and now we're gonna add our milk. Maybe the camera and I'll do the milk. Yeah, is it nice and frothy? We also have a question from Anna. Is it supposed to have the honey already before the milk? Yeah, the honey was when um, I added coconut sugar, you can add honey. And can you pin it to me? So, can you guys see me? Yeah, they can see it. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, great. Okay. So a nice little barista trick is you're gonna wanna tilt your cup like this and then pour the milk over it. And after you've done the pour over, you'll notice that suddenly you start like pouring everything in this motion, but it's actually not necessary. I literally can't help it. I even plant water my plants like this. So there we go. Stir that a little more. Should be nice and orange, yellowish color. Like this. And like turmeric, it, it careful because it stains. So like, I at home I have a mug that I specifically always make my turmeric latte in because it stains it orange. And then you should already have the ginger in there. Um, and I like to garnish with the ginger candy. Like this. And a little bit of cinnamon. And there you go. And you guys, your drink is gonna look maybe different depending on the kind of um, milk that you used. 
or if you the you know the color of the turmeric that you use the amount of um if you use honey over coconut sugar it's probably going to look a lot lighter a lot more orange um i i would love to see your guys's um drinks and what you made so you know if you take pictures um tag adventure cafe and also tag resto i'd love to see them now leanne how's how's yours look and taste i see beautiful mm -hmm. right here tell that tell her that we haven't tried it yet we haven't tried it yet but it looks really good yeah um, i don't i don't have a stick to put my ginger candy on but will you tilt the camera for me today Where's Riazi? Where's Riazi? There she is. It looks good. Oh, it looks delicious. It's hard to tilt. I love your ginger candy. How's it taste? Oh, it's really good. And I use almond milk. Yeah, almond milk is so great. Murik, let's see yours. Oh, yours is beautiful. You managed to really whisk it really well. In the cafe, I always use a bamboo whisk. And he's adding some, is that fresh cinnamon? Gorgeous. So nice. That looks really good. And you can also make this drink. Here we have Anna. Anna, I want to see your guys' too. Let me see. Cheer. Oh, there's the mug. Coffee. Coffee. New York. I love it. How do you like it? Is it good? Thumbs up? Yeah? Uh, amazing. So good to see you guys. I can't believe you're joining from Spain. Taylor, how's yours? <laughs> It's a 10 out of 10. I've never had a turmeric latte before. I was kind of skeptical, but it's so good. Yeah, it's it's the best. It's amazing. Yours looks great. I love it. I used coconut milk because it's the only thing I have, but it ended up turning out so good. Coconut milk is another great option. Is Did anybody else um, that maybe I don't see on camera did make it? That's all right, you guys are all muted. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask the final trivia question of the day, and that is, why is turmeric healthy for you? So the options are, A, it helps with toothaches, B, it aids in hair growth, or C, it aids in digestion. So put your answers down for that. Um, the nice thing about the tumor, this drink too, when you guys were whisking it and whisking it and whisking it, um, you can add hot water to it. Or what you can do is take a cup of ice, pour whatever kind of milk you like, and then that shot of turmeric with the ginger and cinnamon that you made, pour that into the cold milk. And then you just have an iced version of a turmeric latte. And it's really delicious. Um, especially if you're in Texas and it's like 100 degrees. It's been hard to drink the warm drinks here, um, unless I'm blasting the AC. So, cool. So, did everybody put their answers in for this? Yeah, we've got answers coming in right now. And um, I was very curious about this question because I actually, a friend gave me these turmeric, lot, these turmeric um, pills, and I was always wondering what they were good for, so I'm very excited for the answer to this question. Um, and we do have the answers coming in. A lot of C's, a lot of people think it aids in digestion. Um, I'll give you five more seconds to do this. Also in a moment, I'm gonna ask you whether you, made a whether you made a drink or not, if you grab a cup so we can all cheers each other at the end of the class, that would be awesome. Um, so grab a class and keep it nearby. Um, and keep putting in your answers for the questions. I'll give you five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Why? What have we got? Why is turmeric healthy for you? A helps with your toothache. B aids in hair growth. C aids in digestion. Okay, the answer to this is C. It aids in digestion. So it's really good um, if you just ate a really big meal, um, Puerto Rico, a little like mofongo, um, you know, maybe something like that. Drink a turmeric latte afterwards, and it'll help you digest your food. Um, and that's it. That's it from me. Should we do a, a cheers? Yeah, one sec. Before we do, I just wanted to say, my first of all, uh, thank you so much. Um, that was an amazing class. And before we wrap up, we're actually going to open up for a few questions. So if people have some questions, stick around. Friends. And, uh, 
Oh my God, I see you. We have another Puerto Rican on here. Another Puerto Hi. Rican on here. We've had a few people join in the last few, in the last little bit as well. Um, but to stick around for some questions, and before we go, we're also going to send around a survey because we'd love to get feedback. You know, we've been running a few of these, and we'd love to get your thoughts. It only takes about a minute or so to fill it out, and you'll get it sent uh, in the chat as also in an email from here. So if you can fill it out while we do it. Um, coming up with any questions you've got for my, if everyone can grab a glass, whether you made a, a tea or a coffee or not, and just um, we're going to cheers on three. Wait, let me get my camera ready. Sorry. It's gotta go on the gram. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Cheers. Cheers. Oh my God, I love all of you. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have while you're enjoying um, your lattes and drinks. So if you've got any questions, feel free to either unmute your mic, you can ask my directly, or you can put them in the chat if you want um, me to ask them on your behalf. And also, if you don't have a question, you can also start filling in the survey um, that Sheba sent through uh, and just giving us some feedback on how you found the session. Any and questions? Of course, um, Ayad, we need to announce the winner of the trivia. Oh, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> we have a winner. You do? Okay, let's, let's get that. Our, um, we'll have, ask two questions and then we'll, we'll announce our winner. How's that? Yeah, ask a few questions. Go ahead. Um, the first one I, I wanted to ask you, Mai, is um, when do you like drinking your spice latte? When's your favorite time of day or what day of the week do you prefer to drink your spice latte, the turmeric latte? Day of the week. Uh, no, I drink it every day, um, either in a tea or in, in, as a latte. And I always drink it in the evening after dinner. Amazing. Yeah. And second question, um, you talked about uh, a coffee bean subscription. Can you tell us more about what's happening with that, what that looks like? Yeah, it's awesome. Actually, the, like a bunch of people here uh, ordered coffee. Francis in Puerto Rico got hers a couple days ago. Taylor, um, I have Chicago, Aaron and Maggie got their coffee. Um, you know, the nice thing about it is, so, I mean, you, you're you part of a community. Um, it's a subscription, so it's a membership, and you can decide how often you want the coffee delivered and sent to you. So you can do, like, once a month. You can select how many bags of coffee you want. Um, you can do it per week. Um, so I recommend doing a biweekly order, um, so that way you can have your coffee fresh every two weeks. As we discussed, that's about the shelf life of fresh coffee um and then the other part of and we ship anywhere in the country so you know it doesn't matter where you guys are if you need coffee um right now you want some good coffee i'm happy to send it to you um you can order it on our website it's adventurecafe.nyc and the other part of the subscription and the membership is that there's a community slack channel so we're going to be doing and hosting a lot more uh, videos like this, um, tutorials, recipes go on there. It's a place to just kind of check in um, and hang out with either other members from all over the world, post pictures of your morning coffee. Taylor like sends me awesome pictures of where she's drinking her coffee in the morning. Um, so it's just a really nice way to kind of still have that community since we're all kind of like trapped in, in our uh, apartments and homes right now. and. Um, that's it. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's really useful. And so the winner of today's trivia is going to get five dollars off um, yeah. a subscription to the coffee, the, the coffee beans. And yeah. um, we're going to announce the winners in a moment. Sheeves, I can either do it if you want to send it to me, or I'm happy for you to do it as well. Maybe you want to start from third, if if the, if it works, third second first, or you can just go straight for first. Well, we have. Um... Kate in third place. Kate, do we have you on the line? I love you, Kate. Taylor, Taylor, you put up a really good fight for first, but you ended up in second, oh. which is amazing. Nice. <laughs> and the winner who takes home the grand prize gift card is Shalek. Roll it, roll it. That's amazing. Congratulations. I'll send you a special code with uh, with your discount. 
I, I'd love to open it up for like another couple minutes. If you have to go, like I totally understand. I haven't seen a lot of you in a while and uh, I'd love to hear from some of you. Like, do, what did you think? Do you have any questions? Camille Spokalate. <laughs> Unmute yourselves to speak if you'd like. Where's the cafe actually um, located? I, I've never heard of it. I'm friends with Shiba and Mora and I got their invites on social media and I was like, this event sounds amazing. So I joined it, but I, where are you guys actually located? Um, we are located on the Lower East Side on Delancey Street and next to the Tenement Museum uh, between Ludlow and Orchard. And then um, there's another location in Long Island City in Queens. Where do you live? I'm in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Nice. So yeah. once this is all over, uh, it'd be awesome to come check it out. Yeah. For now, um, you're going to get some coffee beans from us, so that's exciting. Awesome. Nice. Who else? What you, do what'd you guys think? Any questions, comments, thoughts, excitements? Jenny, go ahead. Any questions? Mai, you were awesome. So informative. I learned a lot. Resto, y'all, this was an amazing experience. Thank you so much for putting it all together. Yay! Is there, um, is there anyone who had their favorite? Did you prefer the first coffee, second coffee, or a turmeric latte? Hey, I see you unmuted yourself. Oh, I was just going to say that I liked the trivia a lot. <laughs> Of course you did. I, I, oh. I know you, but that's so great. I'm glad that you liked it. Was it like informative? Because even like guess I don't know. I was like I think light roast is the strongest, and it was something I've been wondering lately because I always see like the Starbucks things in the grocery store when I'm running through it at one a.m. So <laughs> yeah, it's just cool to hear. Um, Becker, what'd you think? I made one pour over. I burnt it pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> but my second batch was better. I loved it. it. It's all about practice. You just keep doing it and, and you'll get it. Yeah, it was rough, but it was good. <laughs> okay, good. Nice. Oh, it's, so, it's so good to see everybody. Aaron, how are you guys doing? Did you, did you like it? Yeah, it was so fun. I just ordered a mocha pot so I can try some of this other stuff. Um, but we had a couple couple iced coffees while watching you and it was really fun. Yeah. That's thank great. you. Yeah, thank you. That's great. Yeah. I just made the turmeric uh, latte so good. <laughs> oh, you like it, Livia? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Have you had it before anywhere? No, 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 no. Not ever. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it just like it's homey and warming. Um, Nikki, did you what do you think? Are you still there? I think maybe Nikki's gone. All right. Well, I don't want to take up any more of you guys' time. Um, no. Yeah, I'll take it back to you. You guys do baked goods and food as well. Sorry? You guys do baked goods and food at the cafe as well? Um, I don't bake anything there myself. Uh, we get it delivered from dough. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I love to cook, so... For a lot of these next ones, I'm gonna to try to do like kind of like wine pairing, but what you would pair with different things that you're you're drinking. Um, I also want to do one that's specifically for matcha, and I think that eventually I will um, add matcha to the subscription as well because it's really fun for me to make, um, iced or hot, and uh, it's very popular in the cafe. And this has just been really fun because it makes me feel like I'm back in my coffee shop hanging out with my friends and I, I really just miss that um, social aspect of it. Awesome. Yay. Cool. My thanks so much. Thanks everyone for joining us. And just a reminder, sign up for the subscription to Beans, make your coffees great. And if you guys can fill in the survey, just give us your feedback. We'd love to know about more cafes and bars you want to see. If you want to see Maya again, what you love, what you didn't love, what we can do better and um, send them through. And we look forward to seeing you again. Follow us on Instagram and all on Facebook, and you'll hear about the next one that we're doing um, very soon. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. I love you guys. Love you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Love you, Mai. Bye. That's awesome. Thank you. Miss you. I love you, Giga. Miss you. Thank you so much for joining. Bye, guys. Bye.
Bye, Bella. Bye, Bella. Bye, Bella. Bye, Bella. <laughs> <laughs>